Mr. Briggs from Learn Spanish World interviews Sabbatico. YouTuber, influencer, travel blogger, multilingual. Traveling is his way of life, and he shares his experiences on his YouTube channel. My dear amigos, I have the privilege and the honor of welcoming Sabbatico to our channel. Eh, hola, hola Sabbatico, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, muy bien. That was quite the intro. I don't know if I can uh, live up to that. But... <laughs> ¿Dónde I'm estás ahora? Happy. Where are you? Estoy en Ghana, uh, in West Africa. And uh, you ever heard of that? And sí. I've been here for the past week. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to uh, learn the local language here now. It's called Chui. What is it called again? It's called uh, Chui or Twi. <laughs> T W I, yeah. It's a it's it's a, an interesting continent, Africa. So many languages are spoken, and and on your videos, I've been able to see that that you have a gift with languages. How many countries in Africa have you visited so far? So this is actually the seventh one, uh, and uh, yeah, I probably could have been to more by now, but. The way that I travel is I like to spend like a long time in each country, at least a month. Uh, so, yeah, I'll probably be here for like 30 days or so, getting to know the people, the language, <laughs> stuff like that. Fabulous. One of the things that, that really um, engaged me with your content is that you are a very down to earth uh, kind of guy. And and you have a way of clicking with people regardless of their cultures. And I noticed that one of the things is the fact that you learned the languages. Uh, when did you start learning languages? And, and what was the first language that, that you learned? Yeah, that's a pretty good question because I like to tell people that I didn't really start learning languages until I was about 18. Uh, technically, you know, they give us Spanish classes in high school in America. I don't think I learned a single thing in those classes. I, I didn't remember <laughs> anything. I remember that to say hola. <laughs> and gracias. And by the end of high school, I just thought I was terrible at languages, uh, like most Americans. And um, it wasn't until after that, some point after that, um, I just decided, like for fun, and after a few suggestions, like, I wanted to learn Arabic, actually. Uh, and then I started learning Spanish around the same time. And I just thought that would be really cool. Because I could go to the Middle East, find out what's happening over there. I could use Spanish to go down to Mexico and South America. Uh, so what I did was, uh, I think it was the summer or two years after I started learning Spanish. Uh, I made a goal, like I was going to go to Mexico. And I, I was going to use Spanish to like really get to know the country, talk to people and everything. Uh, and that's what I did. Because uh, I know... <laughs> I didn't want to go to Mexico and just hang out in Cancun or like, you know, the typical Ringo experience in Mexico. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's what I did. And that kind of like set off, like ignited this spark for the love of language learning. Because after that, I was I was hooked. I was like, whoa, these are like keys to like getting to know a culture. So that's like right. I started learning French after that and it just went on and on and on until the present day. <laughs> Incredible. One of the things that sets you apart from other travel bloggers is the fact that when you visit a place, you make a genuine effort to to learn as much as you can about the local culture and the language. You have a special connection with the audience, with, with, the, with the people of, of each place that you visit. Uh, when you yeah. visited Mexico, for example, I noticed that you were even learning some of the indigenous languages. Uh, excuse my pronunciation because even though i speak spanish i i cannot pronounce the the is it na, 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 well? i was talking to two mexicans the other week and i couldn't pronounce it but there's a local language that you were able to pronounce it as well yeah no worries i mean there's still people saying i didn't pronounce it properly either <laughs> <laughs> i tried my hardest but uh yeah, it's pretty tough it's called uh Nahuatl. that's uh, the one have, like this tricky <laughs> l sound at the end it's like You know, it's like breathing into your front teeth or something. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I um, when I went to Mexico, I just, I, I in particular really like learning about rare languages 
or languages that don't get talked about a lot, especially if they have like this cool history behind them. Right. And when I found out that Nautu was like the language of the Aztec empire, more or less, I was like, well, that's pretty interesting. Wow. Uh, I got to like, try that. Unfortunately, those languages, the, the indigenous languages of the Americas are really hard, uh, mainly because all the vocabulary is completely foreign. The grammar is really complicated. And the biggest problem of all is just there's like no language learning materials. <laughs> you have to like pretty much use like these old texts from colleges uh, and try to get a teacher if you can, but it's not easy. So one of the questions that I wanted to ask you is in relation to what you just mentioned, that there's certain languages that are very challenging because unlike Spanish or French, where there's a wide range of resources that you can access in the internet, you got this uh, yeah. beautiful language, but obscure in the sense that, they, they, as you mentioned before, uh, they, they, there's no resources. So what do you think is the key to learning acquisition in general? So not only with the major languages, but also with these, uh, these, these, these other languages. Ah, like the key, the Rosetta Stone, being able to learn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't quite think about it like that. Um, although I think I've been following like a framework uh, up until now. Um, I think, well, in terms of language learning, um, like I talked about in one of my videos, uh, I think the key is to first understand like the key vocabulary and the key grammar. Mm -hmm. uh, so that might be something like, I'd say for vocabulary, something like 200 words, which is going to include, you know, like all the question words it's going to include all the important verbs it's going to include yes you know uh and then for grammar um I, some people will tell you like don't worry about grammar mm -hmm. or other people will tell you to just like do one drill after the other especially like you know the education system in most yes. countries <laughs> will focus on grammar like relentlessly uh as is with most things i think the truth is somewhere in the middle that's right <laughs> uh, in a balance you no know, like, yeah, I think often with a lot of languages, like the grammar isn't, there's a lot of grammar that isn't that difficult and you can just kind of like learn it as you go. But I feel like every language, even languages that are like fairly close to English, like Spanish, mm -hmm. will have some crazy thing that's like very foreign <laughs> to you. Like Spanish has like the subjunctive, the subjunctive. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, when I first learned about that, I was like, what the hell is that? Like, I, I just was not really bad. I gotta like uh, change the verb to express emotion. That's right. Um, so, you know, when you encounter something like that, you spend a little extra time on it. And um, it also depends like how far you're going uh, with learning the language. Like, cause you can have different learning goals, I would say. Like if you wanna be very fluent in the language, like if you go to live in the country where the language is spoken or you really, I don't know, you really wanna master it then yeah, you should try and like master like a tense like that. Yes. But uh, if you're just learning Spanish to, I don't know, travel around South America for like six months, you actually probably could skip the subjunctive uh, and still be understood. You know, it's like one of those things, <laughs> that's kind of what we did in English. We used to have a subjunctive, but we were like, ah, it's not that important. Let's just get rid of it. <laughs> so you, you lived in Argentina for a, for a few months or for a year. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about uh, your experience uh, visiting Argentina? Yeah. So the first country I ever visited was Mexico, but the first country I ever lived in was Argentina. Right. And uh, I went there for the first time on a study abroad trip. Yeah. I was a little uh, 20 year old. And um, I just chose Argentina because, you know, I was looking at the programs that were available and I kept reading and hearing that Argentina was like this great place for parties and everything. <laughs> I like, <"Whoa>, okay. <laughs> I got to go there. And uh, I think I think the number one uh, thing that decided that actually was because, you know, most of the Americans, when they go to study abroad, they go to Spain. Yes. Uh, I think some go to Mexico, but the most go to Spain because like right. all their parents will tell them, oh, it's safer, you know, you yep, should go there. Salamanca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was like, all right, I don't think I have the money for Spain, but Argentina is a little bit cheaper. You know, they're always having an economic crisis. So <laughs> like maybe I'll go down there. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, and then, uh, yeah, that was, that's what decided it. And then I was there for a year. Um, I loved Argentina so much that, uh, I decided to try and find a way to come back. Right. And, uh, the way that I figured out was, well, I could try and do like a little master's program down there. Uh, so I went back a few years later to do that. I spent another year in the country. So I spent about two years in Argentina. Well, that explains your your distinct uh, Sp uh, Argentinian Spanish accent. The moment I yeah. heard you say a few words in the Spanish, I knew right away <laughs> he's in Argentina yeah. or he's lived in Argentina. Yeah, yeah. Sí, claro. Uh, you mentioned something really interesting. Um, you said to to me just before that um, English and Spanish have a lot of um, similarities, and you're absolutely right. And uh, there's 20,000 cognates and, 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 and yeah. you know, a lot of Latin uh, words that are both used in, in Spanish and, and English, like perfecto, fantastico, excelente. Was it more challenging for you to learn other languages? For example, I, I understand you also speak Mandarin, Mandarin and a bit of Arabic, like the, 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 the videos that you uploaded about Morocco. And I encourage my audience, please, guys, I'm telling you, if you're not watching these guys' videos, you are really missing out. It's just a, a unique journey. So the, the places uh, Sabbatical goes to, and 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 his gift is is, is amazing the, with with languages. Um, the 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 one in Morocco, you're actually speaking Arabic with people. So was it a bit more challenging to learn those languages? Or yeah, lucky? sorry, I think yeah. The Wi-Fi just got a little story for a second. Oh, so, I think so. I understood what you said, though. It, all, it did the thing where it just all came in in like one second. Satellite uh, fell. <laughs> yeah, you were asking, uh, or maybe just repeat the question. I'm sorry, just so I get it right. As you mentioned, Spanish and English have a lot of similarities, which, which makes it a little bit easier. It's still challenging because, as you said, uh, grammatically speaking, there are differences. You also got the verb to be, to verse to be, ser or estar. Was it um, a bit more challenging learning other languages such as Mandarin, French, uh, Arabic? What was your experience uh, learning other languages once you had learned Spanish? Uh, it's not that like languages like Mandarin and Arabic are just, you know, <laughs> like phenomenally more difficult, like it's impossibly more difficult. Uh, but yeah, they have these unique challenges that are very different from like Spanish or French. Right. And the main thing is with Spanish and French as an English speaker, uh, you have like so many cognates, as you said, like, because, you know, the three languages share a ton of vocabulary from Latin. And That's Greek. right. So, you know, Like philosophy, philosophy, yeah. <laughs> philosophy. Uh, you know, there's tons of stuff like that. And you have no idea how much that helps until you learn something like Mandarin, <laughs> where mm. philosophy is then Joshua, you know, something completely different. And it is much harder to remember a word like that, uh, especially when it's written in like a foreign script. Characters, um, that's so right. you kind of have to uh, put a little more effort into remembering the words. And then often... I, I wouldn't say the grammar is a huge problem or it's not a bigger problem than it is uh, with the languages that are more similar to yours, mm -hmm. but it, it will usually be a bit more different as well. Like uh, with Mandarin again, for example, uh, there's no tenses, you know? Mm -hmm. So like with Spanish tenses are everything, That's you know, right. like it, it's pretty much you spend your time learning el pasado, you know, <laughs> and going through like a list of tenses. What, what are there, like 10 of them? I, I don't remember at this point, but <laughs> there's a lot. Uh, Chinese, there's none. Uh, there's just, you just use context basically to figure out what somebody's saying. And I mean, there is like this one word called la that you can like stick after things and that kind of helps determine whether it's past or not. But yeah, it's like a whole new way of basically seeing the world practically. Uh, and you have to get used to that. And um, yeah, so I... And also, uh, you know, there's like organizations like the U.S. State Department that has put out lists showing mm. like the amount of hours that it will take to master a language or not master, but at least get the fluency. Yes. And they will tell you that Chinese and Arabic will take three times as long as Spanish for a native English speaker mm -hmm. or English, learning English for a native Spanish speaker. Right. Uh, which is crazy. <laughs> um but uh, you have to think about it like, okay, 
So for Mandarin, I got to learn a whole new writing system. I got to learn all these characters. You don't actually have to learn like 10,000 characters, but you got to learn <laughs> quite a few. Uh, that's going to take a minute. Um, with Arabic, you not only have to learn kind of like what's called the written language, right. the literary language, fusha. Uh, that's this is the Arabic that they use on TV uh, yes. and like official government notices. Like they're well-educated uh, Arabic. Uh... Exactly. But then each country has their own dialect, which is often so different that it's basically a different language. Wow. So, for example, when I was in Morocco just recently, all the Arabic that I learned up to then, it helped a little bit, but I practically had to learn it again as like a new language because <laughs> Moroccans are infamous. They're like, well, what is <laughs> They're like the Cubans of uh, oh, right. <laughs> the Arabic speaking world. Like, they're very hard to understand, but it's like even worse than that because it's oh, like, wow. you know, they got their own grammar and stuff. It's crazy. Interesting. That, that's, that's fascinating. Um, one, one question I wanted to ask you, um, you've got a video on your YouTube channel that I would like to recommend my viewers to watch it. And, and my dear amigos, uh, I watch this video. You have to visit his channel, subscribe to his channel because you'll also learn about uh, language acquisition and you'll be able to experience, you know, the world, you'll, he, sabbatical will take you to distant lands and you'll be able to experience to a certain degree the culture through his, uh, through his eyes. Now, sabbatical uploaded a video which is very different to what he uploads most of the time. And he actually gives some excellent advice for all of you that want to learn um, a language, in this case, Spanish. So I'm going to uh, put a link to his channel and also a link to this specific video, because trust me, guys, you know me, I, I hardly recommend any other channels, but you have to watch Sabbatical's videos, all of them, but the one on languages you would truly enjoy. Sabbatical, there was something else I wanted to ask you. You are such a busy YouTuber, and, and I'm just dumbfounded. Uh, your channel was created just over a year ago, you know, and it's grown so yeah. quickly. It's I'm just uh, dumbfounding looking at uh, the figures. Just recently, you 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 reach another milestone. How do you manage and balance your travels, working on your channel, uh, learning languages with all the work you do behind the cameras? Now, I should ask you: Do you edit your own videos, or do you have maybe somebody giving you a hand? Um, yeah, I mean, it, uh, <laughs> it's actually all me. Oh, uh, you, wow. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it feels like yesterday that I started this, uh, very thankful for like everything that's happened so far. Um, but, uh, yeah, it is, I guess, yeah, it is a lot of, a lot to do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Somebody like, I only realize this with people tell me, but like, yeah, I guess technically I do more work overall compared to like some other travel vloggers with like learning the languages and whatnot but i don't really view it like that because right. i've been learning languages basically for fun like for a very long time now like when i was like completely broke i was still learning like different languages and it would just put a smile on my face because i'd be like oh, right. at least i can imagine myself walking around in brazil someday you know speaking wow. portuguese <laughs> so um yeah it just comes like naturally because I basically, you know, I start learning some words. Uh, I'll start like forming sentences. Like, for example, I've been doing that with uh, the language of Ghana, uh, yeah, Chui, well, like 50 different languages, but this is probably the biggest one. And um, I know that I'm not going to become an expert in it. You know, I'm not going to become <laughs> like whatever, even at best, maybe like lower intermediate. But uh, my goal is just to be able to, you know, like talk with people. Uh, Do you find that uh, by learning the, the locals' language, even if it's not uh, mastering completely, do you think yeah. people appreciate the fact that you make a, an effort to learn at least a bit of their languages? Because I've noticed and I observed that some of your videos, uh, it's like their faces brighten up the moment you say a few words and sentences in their language. And some of them are just dumbfounded hearing you speak their languages. Yeah, that has to be one of the best parts because what you quickly realize, uh, especially when you learn, I guess, 
less commonly studied languages is that language is very, very tied to people's identity. So when you go and learn their language, especially a rare one, they're like, wow, you care about me. <laughs> you care about us. It's like they are very, very happy that you did that. You know, they really appreciate it. So and I, I would say that goes for almost everybody. But some cultures, uh, they are just over the top thankful, or at least they, they like display it. <laughs> uh especially africans and chinese people i would say like those are like the two most famous ones i think like chinese people you just you could say like ni hao hello and they'll just be very happy to be like, oh wow <laughs> like, oh, your chinese is so good uh it's famous, kind of a meme at this point but um and africans also they're just so happy like you just learn one word they're like whoa what? <laughs> and they'll be very welcoming and everything. It's and I really, I really appreciate it myself, you know, because I just. Now we're going nice to practice a bit of Spanish with sabbatical. Click the red button and subscribe to my channel and to sabbatical's channel too. De vuelta, de vuelta aquí. Excelente. Estamos yeah. preparados nuevamente. Acá sí. estoy hablando un poquito de español para mis suscriptores. Eh, eh, ¿Quieres invitar a mis suscriptores a ver tu canal? Sí, por favor. Si, si ellos quieren practicar su español, bueno, pueden mirar los videos de Argentina, de, de México, porque, bueno, estoy hablando en inglés cuando estoy hablando a mí mismo, pero cuando estoy hablando en la calle con otras personas, tengo que utilizar el español, ¿no? O el castellano, como digamos en Argentina. I swear, you sound Argentinian. Suenas como argentino. Sí, sí, sí. Hasta utilizo las manos como un argentino ahora. En serio, te digo. Increíble. Esto es lo que ustedes pueden descubrir en el canal de mi amigo Sabático. Él ha viajado a Argentina, a México... E incluso en su último video visitó uno de los territorios españoles en Morocco, en Marruecos, que se llama eh, Ceuta, Ceuta y Melilla, ¿no? Sí, Ceuta. Ceuta. Eh, todavía no estoy seguro cómo se pronuncia Ceuta, sí. porque me, me estaban corrigiendo en los comentarios. Pero, es una bueno, mezcla Ceuta de árabe y... con español, ¿no? Sí, sí. sí. Sabatico, um, I wanted to ask you a question, um, and the question is in relation because a lot of people follow you and your channel keeps growing and, and growing at this pace. I venture to say that this time next year, you probably triple the number of subscribers you have. The, the question is a lot of people like you because you're so laid back and, and down to earth, you're very knowledgeable very intelligent i mean every place you, you visit you've done your research you, it, it's it's an educational channel in its own in the sense that you speak about the places it's not just superficial and mm. also you got the language aspect which sets you apart i venture to say it sets you apart from many other travel bloggers because a lot of travel bloggers they got engaging stuff but everywhere they go they use english you use english but you make an effort to also learn a few words here and there. But a lot of people, even your subscribers, may wonder sometimes, what was your life like before you started traveling? Ah, before I started traveling. Well, it's actually kind of linked because uh, I was actually making trips like this even before I started a YouTube channel. So it... Like in terms of uh, jumping into this lifestyle of traveling and everything, it wasn't that big of a transition, I guess. <laughs> um, but this is like the first time I ever started doing it basically full time, like nonstop. But uh, before I started this, and uh, in order to be able to afford this, that's actually one of the biggest, uh, most frequent questions I ever get. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked in China, actually, for over five years, almost six years. And I had this small company. And with that, I was able to have my life there. And then also in the later years that I was there, start traveling 
like around the region. So I was based in Shanghai and then I was able to travel to like Japan and Thailand and all these places. And um, yeah, it just, I started thinking like, wow, I'd really love to do this in the rest of the world too. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's actually, it's actually interesting like how this all started because um, without the pandemic, uh, you, you can actually thank the pandemic for having this channel because I probably would have never started <laughs> without that because uh, I was actually busy um, not only with the company that I already had, but working on like this new idea. It's going to be like an education startup. Um, and I was probably just going to be stuck doing that for like who knows how long. Um, and then the pandemic happened. And because it was based on studying abroad, <laughs> of course that was completely ruined uh as soon as that started so uh in 2020 i was just kind of lost i was like oh what do i do now you know like uh my revenue is like dropping i'm running out of money uh you know uh, i had to come up with something new so i used like some of my remaining savings um to start making this channel and I'm really, really fortunate that people actually like it because uh, who knows what I would have done without it. Wow. So inspirational. So in other words, when life throws you lemons, you yeah. make lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's never over, you know, like no matter where you are in life, you know, it's or how old or whatever, you know, never think that it's over. You know, That's there's always right. a way out. And how do you feel? Because um, I don't know if you realize this, but... Um, you you actually doing something wonderful because I mentioned to you before I discovered your channel exactly during the these lockdowns that we we went through in Melbourne Australia Australia and Melbourne was the most lockdown city in the world we actually spent two hundred and eighty five days in lockdown in Melbourne and you couldn't go anywhere within a, a radius of five kilometers that's how um, strict it was so. In, wow. in in a way to escape uh, being I don't know uh, how I... we we discovered your channel. I don't know how you did that. But okay, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, all right. If my channel helped with that, I, it did. I, and and I, I, I think help. I think that people have been able to uh, travel and, and distract themselves during such a challenging, uh, difficult times, and you brought a little bit of happiness. I don't know if you realize. What a wonderful job you've you've done because the fact that you're there traveling solo, which is obviously it has its own challenges, but how do you feel when when you when you uh, realize that uh, you bring in not only entertainment but also uh, cultural information, adventures, and taking people kind of distracting them? Uh, do you think that that's one of the reasons also why your channel has grown so quickly? uh yeah um you know what's funny is like when i first started um i started like sharing like these little bits of history uh that i learned in the videos because kind of like with the languages i also really enjoy learning about you know the history of places like following international relations and like i'm just like so excited that i want to share it you know when i'm passing by these things but i just started doing that and uh, at first, I was actually unsure if people actually appreciated this. <laughs> Not, I was like, oh, maybe this is boring. Like, uh, but um, yeah, then people started saying, like, oh yeah, it's your videos are like nice because I can learn about the place and everything. I'm like, oh, that's great. Um, and very engaging. So, very engaging. Yeah, and I, from my own perspective, I would think you know because I don't want to just walk down a street and have no idea, you know like why that area is there you know i think it helps to give context to everything you know if you could understand like why this city is like divided the way it is or like why they speak that language or you know stuff like that um and yeah it's i definitely won't change anytime soon i don't know if i can do it a different way at this point. Yeah. Your, your videos come across as very genuine it's not a typical cinematic you know super produced uh, travel vlog and I think people appreciate that um, that genuineness of, of, of your of your footage and and the fact that uh, you are so laid back and knowledgeable. You're very entertaining. But one question I wanted to ask you, maybe a difficult question, maybe please excuse oh. me if I'm being a bit tactless. 
But traveling solo, do you feel lonely sometimes? Uh, ¿Te sientes solo, solo a veces? Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, bueno, sí, no sé. <laughs> a veces, tal vez. But no, uh, no, to be honest, it's, it's interesting because I do think you have to have a certain kind of personality um, to be able to do this long term. Because I, you know, it, especially in certain cultures like Latin America, you know, you want to be around your family or not far from your family. <laughs> like it's kind of difficult to be away. Um, and I'm not saying like you need to be like a loner or whatever, but you have to be comfortable with not seeing your friends or family for like, you know, potentially months or longer. And, um, but it's never that difficult. And um, I nunca me siento solo porque, you know, I'm always making new friends, right? It's like, I'm always just fine, getting invited to like events and like parties and everything. And I don't think there's ever been a single moment over these past two years where I, I sat down and thought, oh, really lonely right now. No, wow. <laughs> can't even remember the last time I thought that actually. <laughs> and another question I wanted to ask you, um, it's interesting how you've traveling, you, you're traveling around Africa. It's one of the places where no many uh, travel bloggers uh, go. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. place. And, and I understand that uh, there's some countries that are very safe as well, but there's also some countries that can be a little bit more dangerous. Have you ever been um, in a situation that, that, that you, you, you felt that it was a dangerous situation that, that it could somehow backfire. Uh, I, I remember watching a video of you where there was some kind of situation with with a local uh, law enforcement uh, agency. Oh, yeah, I think that was Kenya. Um, yeah, um, yeah, at times, yeah, this could be difficult. Um, uh, contrary to what some people might think, I don't go out of my way looking for like dangerous situations. Uh, I think there are some people now trying to build channels off of that. And, but uh, yeah, I I actually try to avoid that. Uh, I will go to, I guess, what people would think are dangerous areas, like low income areas, but often they're not. Or uh, that is to say, like, they're not as dangerous as people think they are. Like a good example was um, when I was in Brazil, uh, when I was in the city of Salvador, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like that, that city is completely infamous in Brazil. And probably for good reason. There are definitely neighborhoods that you don't want to walk into <laughs> by yourself with a camera. But, you know, then I walk up this hill that like nobody would go, go up by themselves. And, uh, you know, I met uh, Nava, like that kind old lady or middle-aged lady, <laughs> excuse me, uh, who was living by the sea and just welcomes me into her house, like gives me breakfast, uh, unprompted, doesn't ask for anything, just wants to help me like find a car to rent and everything. So I think um, I, what's important is I, I try to do some research about the city. So I'm not walking into like a bad situation. Uh, and I try to minimize risk however possible. And um, wise, you anticipate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's what you got to do. The, the problems arise when you don't do your research because you walk into yes. like a drug lord's territory or something. And then <laughs> I don't want to do that. And another question that I wanted to ask you, um, of all the experiences that, that you've had, uh, is there one in particular that, that stands out? Uh, oops. Yeah, I don't know if I could answer that one because uh, <laughs> there's been so many. <laughs> uh, you could write a book with yeah. all the experiences that you've had. <laughs> yeah, I might just have to do that at some point. <laughs> but if I had to pick one experience out of all of them, Oh, that's that is a tough one um i don't know if let me think yeah i don't know if i'll like if this is just like the number one out of all of them um it's kind of just for some reason the first one that popped into my head but uh yeah when i was in jamaica and uh you know i just rented like a scooter and was driving through the countryside i just stop you know trying to get like some lunch, some chicken and like a drink or something. <laughs> and the family in there is just like, oh, hey, you want to come to this grave digging party tomorrow? Uh, you're completely invited. Like, they had known me for all of like 10 minutes and they do that. 
And then obviously, as you saw in the video, if you watched it, I go to that and, uh, you know, the people are amazing. Uh, you know, I'm helping out like dig a grave for this like poor guy that I never met, but you know, I'm just getting into the community spirit. And I remember after that day, uh, just thinking like, hey, this just makes me feel good about humanity. You know, it's like, you know, the world is Absolutely. still okay. <laughs> Absolutely. There's still good people out there. You, ha you have a way of connecting with people. And, and that's one of the things that I, 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 I like about your videos. And I'm convinced and I really, uh, I believe that my subscribers would really enjoy experiencing what you've experienced through your through your videos. It's uh, even with that couple in Argentina, you went to one of the areas that was a little bit uh, dangerous and you just clicked yeah. with them. If he just opened yeah. up to you, there was even a guy that walked. That I, I, I'll be honest, you know, if I see like I probably turn around and walk the other way, and he just yeah. stopped and you started talking to him, and he just yeah. connected with you. He even walked you all the way to the bus, and he waited for yeah. the bus to arrive. How do you, how do you do it? I mean, it's a, it's a, it, um, how do you connect with people? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, because I. I didn't view that situation as dangerous as maybe a lot of people watching the video thought it was. And specifically because I didn't get a bad energy or sense of bad energy from that guy. It's like, I wanted to hang out with him a little bit, like try to understand him a bit better. And of course I knew that, you know, he had problems in his life, you know, like my drug addiction or something like that, but I didn't sense, you know, like it's like he wanted to hurt me, you know? Yes. Meanwhile, there are other people where you can immediately tell that, you know, it's like some people are just a little more aggressive, a little more, you know, mm. and I'm not going to mess with those people. I'm not going to like go up with the camera or anything. You know, I'm not even going to try. But as long as I can understand that you're a decent person, no matter what problems you might have, I'd feel comfortable. You know, I didn't I really didn't feel that much in danger the entire time I was there. Maybe like before I met that guy, actually. Because <laughs> once I knew that guy, then I had somebody in the community and he was even pointing out like, oh no, don't do, don't do that. Here's the bus station. I think I think you treated them with dignity. You asked for their name, you, the, the, the way you interacted with them. That speaks really highly of you too, because uh, you know, unfortunately sometimes when people go to places like that, they have preconceived ideas and they prejudge people. But you went there with, you know, an open mind and, and, and you, you greeted them, you open up to them. And I think they can also sense that both ways. And I was really impressed because, as I said to you, and, and I encourage my subscribers to watch that video because it's amazing. This guy pretty much walked him all the way to the bus, waved goodbye to sabbatical like he known him for his entire life. And uh, that, that, that was really incredible. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you. Uh, what do you enjoy the most about traveling and what do you dislike the most? Because there's pros and cons, I, I, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, well, the pros I could talk about for like all day, I guess. There's, <laughs> there's a million. We got time, we got time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, just the pros are obviously the people. Um, it's like I've never taken a cruise or stayed in like a five star resort or anything like that. Uh, and so like the biggest benefit for me has always just been meeting different people, uh, learning about their countries, uh, trying like a local cuisine, you know, trying local drinks and everything. It's going to be fun. Uh, and it's just been like amazing, like all these friendships I've made all around the world and whatnot. You know, uh, I've even formed like long-term relationships and whatnot. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And also uh, equally important to me is just kind of the sense of adventure, you know, because I guess I'm the kind of person that would get very, very restless if I'm forced to stay in one place at the same time. Uh, like I was dying during like the first months of the pandemic. Like I was, Can you imagine? what do I do? That was like my worst nightmare. <laughs> wow. Um, so, yeah, just to be on the move and discovering new things, there's because there's always something new. And uh, that's one of the biggest things. Uh, in terms of cons, um, I don't know. 
<laughs> like, I guess the only thing uh, might be if it, it, it's hard to have, I guess, some kind of like stability with like, I don't know, having health insurance or stuff like that. Right. This hasn't actually been like a real problem to me up until now, mm-hmm. but um, I guess it could be. Do you and get then, tired sometimes? Um, yeah, but if I do get tired, I can just sleep <laughs> like in wherever I'm staying. So it's like, you know, um, I mean, often when I go back to New York to visit my family, there'll be like all this stuff that I have to catch up on. So it's not even like I'm getting a break when I go back there, you know? So it's like, I'm like, well, I think I feel more, <laughs> I think I can get more rest. If I'm just wow. hanging what out in an Airbnb contrast, in Ghana. Yeah. What is our contrast vis- visiting these distant lands and then going back to, you know, the capital of the world, New York, your family must view you almost like uh, some kind of Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, they're uh <laughs> yeah, my parents are funny because they're thankfully I have parents who you know, even though they're like working class, they never tried to like force me to like do any particular thing. They they're always like open to me, like with all my crazy ideas and whatnot. So, you know, at the end of 2020, when I was just like, hey, uh I know this sounds crazy, but I'm gonna go and try and make travel videos. They're like, wow. All oh, right. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, yeah. And uh, and originally, you know, like I only had like 10 subscribers starting out when I posted like my first few videos from Mexico. My mom was one of them and she watches them. She watches all the videos, which can be awkward at times, but <laughs> she's very supportive. And um, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, I come back yeah, home yeah. once in a while. Your story is so interesting because a crisis, a worldwide cross- crisis that threw the entire world of balance paved yeah. the way it literally paved the way for um, an interesting journey it's just uh you, i think it'd be a good idea if, if you one day wrote a book because who would have thought that uh in the middle of the pandemic when the entire world is shutting down you would bring happiness and entertainment and education to so many people around the world i mean uh for my subscribers, if you are not aware of these, uh, some of you already know sabbatical. Actually, even at work the other day, um, I'm a school teacher. I work here in a local high school in okay. Melbourne, Australia. And, and I mentioned to one of the maths teachers, oh, I'm so happy because uh, I absolutely love this guy. He's, he's, he's amazing. He, uh, he travels to distant lands and he asked me, what's his name? I said, no, his name is uh, Tommy, but his YouTube channel is called Sabbatical. I know him. I've been watching his videos. <laughs> And uh, one of your videos, I think, has nearly nearly 15 million views. I mean, the, the, one of the oh, videos yeah. in Africa of that child, 15 million people. I mean, I study in what, you said 20,000 people, 30,000, 15 million people. That's uh, more population than Uruguay, for example. So the, the, the number of people visiting your channel and watching your content is just incredible. And this has been done in just a little bit over a year. I, uh, I, I, I don't know, but uh, watch out, Mr. Beast. Sabbatical is here. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Beast. Yeah. Uh, sabbatical. Oh, yeah. um, another question. How do you prefer me to call you, Sabbatical or, or Tommy? Uh, you can call me Tommy. Tommy. I uh, like that. I've actually been uh, yeah, a little confused <laughs> about that myself because, yeah, a lot of people call me Sabbatical now, but that was more supposed to be like a title for the channel, the journey and everything. That's right. It happens. I'm called learn Spanish pro. <laughs> it's a long name. Yeah. One question no, I wanted to good. ask you, where do you see yourself in 10 years time from now? Ooh. I said five years. I probably could answer that better, but <laughs> 10 years, I got to think about that. Uh, 10 years. Um, well, uh, sadly, I'll probably be done with YouTube, but <laughs> oh. uh, uh, I don't know if I could uh, do this my whole life. Uh, I mean, I'll probably still be traveling my whole life, but uh, <laughs> editing and recording and everything. Um, yeah, uh, I, I'd actually, I've always wanted to like do something, you know, kind of meaningful. I know it's very cliche and everything, but, you know, something that's like helps people out, you know, um, you know, some kind of like, I don't know, whether it be like, I don't know, a tech advancement or something. I probably can't do that, but, you know, something. So I, if I can, like you said, write a book or, I, you know, do something that 
makes everyone's lives a bit better. I'll probably work on that, I guess. And you know, that big projects like that are the kind of stuff that, you know, takes up your time, gives you a reason to wake up every morning. So um, yeah, something like that. I'd say in 10 years, I might actually finally have a house. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, a place I can come back to. Um, can't guarantee that though. But uh, the only thing I can guarantee is, as I said, I will still be traveling. <laughs> Probably. Well, we, we hope that uh, you continue traveling and uh, maybe take a break, but please don't stop uploading your videos because as I said, you bring so much delight and, and happiness to everyone. And, and we do learn a lot because uh, let's be realistic. A lot of us will never have set foot in many of those distant lands. So you're doing an amazing uh, job at the moment with, with what you're doing. And I wanted to thank you so much, so much for this opportunity because I, I personally regard it, to me, it's a privilege. I absolutely love your content. And if you guys wanted to know uh, what Mr. Brick watches, well, I watch Sabbatical's videos. Uh, it's, uh, to me, it, it's, it's a very unique channel. And once again, uh, you need to check his channel. You also uh, have to watch his videos of Argentina and, and Mexico. And, I, and I, I believe you've also been to other Spanish countries. You've been to Chile as well, because I, I saw in your Instagram a few pictures of Valparaiso. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, you, 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 you travel to quite a few Spanish-speaking uh, countries. Sabático, uh, before I let you go, because I know you're traveling and moving from one place to the other, and you must be so tired. So I don't want I don't want to take advantage of your of your kindness, but I would like you to invite my subscribers in Spanish to check your your channel out. Would you like to do that, please? Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Hola a todos de nuevo. Les invito a mirar mis videos en el canal que se llama Sabbatical o Sabbatico. De hecho, tengo un canal en español, ah. pero solo hice como Creo que 12 videos, no me oh, acuerdo wow. bien. Pero That's new. Se llama Sabático. Solo tiene como uh, 300 suscriptores. Uh, ¿Cómo se um, llama? Se llama Sabático. Es Sabático, sabático ah. en español. Um, pero eh, un día voy a volver a hacer ese canal. Pero por ahora tengo el canal en inglés uh, que se llama Sabático. Y tengo videos de... Uh, Sudamérica, Argentina, México, uh, y muchos de África, todo el mundo. Y les invito. Y te agradezco por invitarme a hablar <ríe> en uh, tu canal también. On the contrary. Al contrario, muchísimas gracias, Sabático. Voy a poner el enlace a tu canal. Y si me mandas el enlace a tu canal de español, pongo los dos. El de inglés y el de español, así mis suscriptores también pueden practicar contigo. Muchas, muchas gracias, Sabático. Aprecio mucho tu tiempo. Now, I'll, I'll say um, this to my subscribers once again. Guys, go and check his channel. It's amazing. You'll have fun. You also uh, learn a few Spanish words and phrases here and there. And once again, Sabático, thank you so much. Keep up the good job. And I'll, I'm already looking forward to your next videos, amigo. Once again, yeah. take care, my friend. Yeah, thanks a lot. Have a good one, guys. Adios. Stay tuned for a bonus and extra behind cameras with Sabbatical. Hello. Hey. Hey. Hello, Tommy. Hey. Todo bien? Todo muy bien. What a, what a, a nice surprise to see you, amigo. Yeah. Thank you, ah, thank happy you so to much be here. for connecting. <laughs> yeah. So you're in Australia. That's right. I'm in uh, Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia, in the state of Victoria. And um, I'm so glad that you were able to uh, uh, give me this opportunity. Uh, I've been watching your videos now for probably eight months, nine months. And uh, wow, I'm really wow. impressed with your language acquisition skills. It's really amazing. Yeah, thanks, dude. Like, uh, obviously, I'm a huge fan of learning languages. So, you know, anyone who has a language channel or anything, you know, Somebody who's tr trying to teach languages and spread the love of it. <laughs> I'm happy to uh, talk with Linda Ann. 
I, I remember, that's right, yeah. Um, I noticed, uh, well, at first I thought you were fluent in, in, in Spanish when I watched one of your videos. Well, I watched quite a few of your videos in Argentina. I was so yeah. engaging. You're walking around one of these suburbs in Buenos Aires, I think it was, and uh, it was yeah. a little bit dangerous. And, and then I heard you say a few things in Spanish. You went to talk to a couple. There was a, a, a couple of um, uh, people living in an abandoned house, I remember, and And I could yeah. speak an Argentinian accent. And when I found out that you were American, I'm like dumbfounded thinking, wow, you, you really speak Spanish pretty well to me. Yeah. Because, yeah. That, that had to be one of my uh, top three craziest experiences I've done <laughs> for all these videos. But um, yeah, yeah, Argentina. Yeah, that was um, the first country I ever lived in outside of the U.S. So right. even though I don't have any Argentinian blood or anything, it just uh, I really like the language and uh Put a lot of work into it. Uh, it. It shows. It shows. Uh, you have a gift, my friend. Uh, you definitely have, you have a gift. I venture to say you speak Spanish better than I speak English because I have a very strong Spanish accent, whereas you sound Argentinian, uh, even the way you pronounce the SH, the show, and the, yeah. it's so Argentinian. Yeah. Yeah. Not the clear. Not the clear. <laughs> no, the verdad. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now you're in Ghana at the moment? In Africa? I'm in Ghana. Wow. In West Africa. Yeah, fantastic. So, and back to uh, I guess like the roots of the channel because uh, wow, in Africa, especially last year, very unique, very unique because uh, to many people, Africa is a very mysterious, distant continent, and not many travel bloggers actually visit Africa. So yeah, your your, your content is very unique. It's fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking the same thing to be honest, like. Uh, Before I even started, I was like, where are all the videos about Africa? You know, <laughs> thing you could find is like safaris and like maybe a video from Egypt or something like that. But uh, I was like, where are the videos with the people? And then you get here and you find out the uh, huge amount of languages that everybody speaks. You're like, wow, it's okay, it's a nice. just breathtaking. To, uh, the, it's just mind blowing the, the number of languages and nations and and how are you able to arrive in a place that I assume you've never been before too well to most of, of those destinations and you pick up the, the words, the sentences so quickly. It's just incredible. You, you really do have a gift. I mean it. I, uh, uh, it's, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little story after, but I'm here to interview you, not the other way around, but I'll, I'll tell yeah. you a, a little secret. Oh, we, we were in lockdown for, for a long time in Melbourne, Australia. Actually, it was the most lockdown city in the world. So we couldn't it. go anywhere within five kilometers. And this is when we started discovering, you know, uh, uh, travel vloggers. And I came across your, your, your video, your first video, when you went to Southern Argentina and you found this bunker, a uh, Nazi bunker of some kind in the South. Oh, yeah. We were hooked after that. <laughs> Every single video, we always waiting for your new videos. Yeah, so. that, that was another interesting trip, that I recall. Very. All right, my amigo, look, I know how busy you are and traveling, you're probably tired as well. So I really thank you so much for this opportunity. I, I appreciate it because I'm really going to promote your channel. Um, I'm going to also recommend them to watch that video where you speak about language acquisition because, oh my goodness, it was so yeah. accurate what you said. I, I loved it. I, I couldn't agree more with all the points that you touched. Estás yeah. listo? Estoy listo. Perfecto. Aquí vamos. Uno, dos, tres. YouTuber, influencer, a travel vlogger, multilingual. Mind you, he's not bilingual, but he's multilingual. Traveling.